All right, hi everybody. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Newton's first law of motion, which is the law of inertia. And in order to talk about that, we have to make sure we understand some finite concepts about mass as well as weight, okay? Um, so just kind of keep, an, keep a, I, wanna, I want you to keep in mind that we did just finish talking about reference frames and how if I am an observer on the ground, I see things differently than the person in the plane, and I see motions differently than the person in the plane or in the train or whatever it might be. Um, so when we talk about an inertial reference frame, we just mean that there is a specific frame in which we should be looking at the situation. So Newton's law states that if a body is at rest, it will remain at rest, or if it's in motion, it will remain in motion at constant velocity, unless it's acted upon by an external force of some kind that will change its motion, either direction or magnitude of that motion. Um, from there, we can kind of give ourselves some examples. So for instance, anything traveling at a constant velocity or not moving at all has um, no inertia, right? So it just says that it's obeying the law of inertia at that point. Um, if it's in motion, it will stay at motion unless it stops or speeds up. Um, a good example with a car is the acceleration of the car versus the versus the stopping force of the brakes changing the direction of the vector. Um, and we talked about acceleration vectors and how they can point opposite or in the same direction as velocity of an object in motion. So just kind of keep in mind that if something is at constant velocity, um, it has it is obeying the law of inertia. If it is changing motion, it is not obeying the law of inertia. Okay, um, so just kind of understanding what we're saying here is that inertia is going to be something that everything has and that the only way for something to change its motion involves there having to be a cause, which we refer to as a net external force. Now, Newton's first law of motion is very good at, def is very good at giving us an idea of how inertia works, um, and we do want to make sure that we continue to understand that Newton's laws of motion, all three of them put together, define classical mechanics, which is what we study in the first semester of our class. Okay, just to kind of give you an idea of some other reasons or some other ways that things can change motion. Just because something is changing motion and you may not see the force that's changing the motion. In other words, if you're talking about a car changing its, um, its velocity, remember that something has to cause that. Either you're putting your foot on the gas or you're putting your foot on the brake um, and then something is responding. Well, that's a situation where it's really easy to see what force is changing the motion. But if we talk about um, a force that's a little bit harder to identify, that would be um, something like friction. So friction is the thing that typically causes slowing because friction is defined as a, a force that acts in the opposite of an object's motion. And now we can talk about different types of friction and how much friction something has versus something else. We can talk about um, adding like talcum powder to make a surface smoother or oiling up a surface to make it smoother. Um, we can talk about the difference between like ice and concrete and carpet and how one of them has a lot of friction and some of them have less. But just kind of keep in mind that just because most forces are identifiable, that doesn't mean that all of them are. Okay, and just to summarize, because that's the end of section two, really, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have one more slide before the summary. Um, when we talk about inertia, we have to talk about how everything has mass. So in order for something to have inertia, it must have mass. In other words, every object has mass. Um, mass is something that is independent of weight. Weight is defined on a specific planetary body as the pull of gravity on something's mass. Now, Mass is a measurement of matter and the amount of matter that something contains. And so when we say something has um, inertia and is moving with constant velocity, then what we're talking about is the mass of something that is moving with constant velocity. So we measure inertia by knowing mass. If something is moving at a constant speed, the um, the amount of inertia it has is related to how much mass it has um, as far as how much of a force it will have or that it will take to counteract the motion. Um, the unit that we use for mass in this class is always the kilogram, okay? So just to kind of go back over what we kind of introduced in this 
chapter or in this section um, i'm going to remind you that newton's first law of motion says that a body in at rest will stay at rest or a body in motion will remain in constant motion unless it gets acted on by an external force and then we talked about some of the different external forces that could cause that change in motion we call it the law of inertia as well um, then we defined inertia related to an object's mass and we said that mass is just the quantity of matter independent of weight which is um, technically referred to as something as gravity okay all right so the next thing we are going to talk about is section three, but I'm going to go ahead and split the two videos up because the section three stuff is going to take me a little bit longer. Um, so stay tuned for the next one.